Give us a hand clap up in this place. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure to be here. I wanted you all to stand up and feel that energy. You see, well, sometimes when we come to conferences or when we work on ourselves, it feels weird. I don't care if your excuse is, well, I didn't have a father figure. I actually don't care because you won't have that excuse after the day. I don't care if you say I never had a mentor in my life because you're going to have an opportunity to find one today. I don't care if you gang affiliated and you think you can't escape because last time I checked, a lot of gang affiliated people either get out in two ways, bro. You die or you get saved. And one thing that any man is more fearful of than most things in life is God, bro. Because when God moves, you got to be fearful. I want you to run a second video for me. As we get this thing started off right, everybody take a seat. And I'm going to share with you my story. We have, ah, I know that uniform. That's Bahamas Academy. Bahamas Academy, we make some noise. Y'all dead, bro. QC, let's try it. As you wait for the video of the Lord. QC, let me hear you again. See, they louder than y'all. Let's try this. Bahamas Academy, make some noise. Yeah. All right, cool. We all watch this video. What? Do not touch me without faith in my right. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. Do not touch me. Son, you are for me. That is the third in your attack. You are by your block. You live by your block. So that you can stand there and watch this outbreak, but you will never remember this. So that you will let it really go to the top I will I will remember that. I will regret I will remember that. I will remember that. I will remember that. I have not done nothing. Nothing as a student. I have done nothing as a student. My eyes are bleeding. My eyes are bleeding. My eyes are bleeding. My eyes are bleeding. I am 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 bleeding. Who inside there even understand what was happening just now? Bro, say, say what you thought was happening, right? What was happening just now? Huh? Yeah, they were trying to put me in custody, pretty much. What else do you think was happening? Yeah, I thought, I thought a lot of things, right? Um, at this point in this video, just paint the picture a little clearer. I'm an educated black man. I got two degrees. I'm about to graduate in two months. Get my second degree. I'm supposed to go off to do my master's in positive psychology in Europe. I have a good faithful girlfriend in my head, you know, I love her, but I was talking to two other girls. <laughs> At that point in my life, I had $20,000 in my bank account because I had started a business at an early age. We did fun stuff like going out and seeing girls and having fun, but while I was going through that, I am still a Christian. I never ever declared that I'm not a Christian. That's, that's against the word of God. I was still a Christian, so one particular night, I'm trying to, I'm like, I had like five girls with me, dead fine, but I ain't gonna lie. I was still a virgin too, so I didn't even know what to do with them. I was like, bongi? What is bongi? What do you do with that? Right? <laughs> but I, I got like five girls with me, my boys, they being, they being trying hard for two years to get me to lose my virginity. But one night in particular, I take a ball of Heineken and I slam it on the ground, right? My friends, it's literally like time stopped. And I was walking, about to graduate in a few months. I'm a COBUS president in charge of over 3,000 students. On my resume, I'm beautiful, but in my soul, I'm dark. I'm dead dark. I don't even feel God no more. So I cried out to God, and I said, God, help me. I got on my knees in a parking lot, bro. Expensive jeans and everything. That's when I used to value clothes more than I should. But I got on my knees, ruined my jeans, and I prayed out to God in a wet puddle of Heineken bear, saying, God, help me, buddy. Like, this don't feel right. I got money. I got girls, I got position, but something don't feel right. And I did that prayer and I got up. My boy comes to me, he's like, boy, what you doing on the floor? I was like, boy, I don't know what came over me, but I had a moment where it just didn't feel right. And I left that. A month after that, I would wake up over Atlantis. You see, for the first time, I drank so much. Well, actually not the first, maybe the third time. I drank so much that I blacked out. And where I was sitting, one of my best friends came up to me and tapped on me because he's like, bro, you look like a bum. Now, mind you, this is the same guy with all the money, all the girls, all the prestige. But I'm sitting over Atlantis, all the employees leaving at 12 o'clock, and my boy hit me 
And he's like, but you look like a bum, bro. He drives me in his car, me and him talk. And I start to share with him everything that's going on. I say, but it don't feel right. Something don't feel right. I just don't feel right, bro. So I start to stop drinking. I started to pray more, started to go to church, and I went in front of church to speak to some young people, and I started to cry. I couldn't even get words out. You see, God wasn't allowing me to speak like how I'm speaking to you right now because my blessing was being taken away slowly because I was in a dark place. I just cried in front of church, and everybody thought it was the Spirit. And I was like, I'm trying to talk, and I can't talk in church because, once again, I don't care if you're a gangster. God, don't play, bro. So now I'm at a point where one night, the day before my birthday, I go up in my office. I had a personal office with a key. I used to take some students in, do counseling. I would chill there, watch movies with my girlfriend. And we used to throw parties sometimes. But I had a personal office with my key. And I had a chance to stand up for something. Because security busted in there. And it's like, you throwing a party. And me, I'm a smart, if I could, be honest. Back then, if I could describe myself when I was not in God's presence too much, I was a smart ass. So security is kicking me out of the room. You know what I did? I left the room. I came back in, <laughs> and he said, what you doing? I said, you said, leave the room. <laughs> so he said, no, we got to lock this building. I said, cool. I walked outside. I let him lock the building, and then I opened up the door with my key, and I went back in. So at this time, me and security going at it, right? And I'm like, bro, y'all ain't making no sense. Let me show you why. And I'm running hard on these dudes, bro. If I'm throwing a party, where the people? If I'm throwing a party, where the music? Where the girls, where the drinks. So you're kicking me out of office, and you don't even have proof that something is happening. So in my mind, I'm like, if any time to stand up now, it's a time when I know I write, and he ain't nobody can tell me I wrong. Me and security go at it. One in particular put his hands on me, and I say, bro, don't ever put your hands on me. Because, see, there's a funny thing about the law, right? If I touch you, I ain't wrong. But when you touch me, nothing happens. So I said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to that library right there. I'm going to send some letters to the president. I'm going to send it to your boss. And I'm going to describe to them what happened this evening. How you're telling me I'm throwing a party when at 2 o'clock y'all made me cancel all parties on campus as the COBUS leader, as the student government leader. You made me do that. And all the students on campus hate me because no parties tonight. Now you're telling me I'm throwing a party. So at my point, I'm mad, right? I'm like, finally, I got something I can stand up for and I can go to court for. But I sure ain't right. As I'm typing, some said, speak to the people. And I asked the students, can I talk to you? Students said, yeah, but you're the president, but you talk. And I started to say, but y'all don't think it's time we change? That we stop just trying to get a degree and get purpose? You don't think it's time that we just stand up for stuff that right? And the students there with me, everybody listening, everybody turn around. All of a sudden, the police come to the door. And in my peripheral, I see them. But I turn the next way, I say, what the flip going on here? Next thing you know, security is on me. And they say, bro, we got to escort you out of the library. Come outside. I said, bro, first of all, look at this. This is a computer. It opened, right? I, lay, I write in a letter, right? I didn't press send yet, but I'm writing a letter. Also, I'm the president, so the students told me I could talk. I asked again, students, can I talk? They said, you could talk. I said, so what am I doing wrong? He said, you got to come outside. I said, I'm not moving. Because last I checked, what I thought were human rights and basic rights of a human being, especially of mine, is if I didn't do nothing, you can't prosecute me. You can't carry me outside and carry me in a vehicle if I didn't do nothing. So I stood my ground. I later on, they would try to remove me from the library. That's the piece you saw. I was holding on to a cord. I now have two marks that always remind me of that night. Because after they made sure I was injured and they threw me in a jail cell, guess where I rest my hand, boy? In P. Anybody ever been to a jail cell? It's not clean, right? <laughs> they don't care for them place, bro. I got an infection in both of my fingers. That night I checked out, and for the first time I was in the darkest place of my life. Because I realized, damn, what happened to all these people I represented? Who got my back? I couldn't figure out why God was putting me to do that. So today, let's flash forward. I'm standing before a bunch of men, and I can share that story to you, with you. I don't care what level you at, to say I understand, bro. I understand what it is to lose hope, and you're too smart, and you know you can push dope faster than you can, and the other thing. I understand what it is to go and apply for a job, and you're on the line shaking. Because every time on the job application, they say, do you have a police record? I said, no. And when I got in the job interview, they said, but this is you in this video. 
So if you're getting locked up, how you don't have a police record? If you're making the front page of the newspaper for 10 months, bro, that's how important I was. I made the front page of the newspaper for 10 months. How can you tell me you don't have a police record? So the reason why I'm telling you that story is because all that happened just so this moment here could happen. All that happened so these young men, these powerful, powerful black men, could have opportunity to meet me. All that happened so your teachers and your counselors would know me so that this moment could happen. So I want you to give a hand clap to God. And as we start this thing off right, I want you to understand that nothing is by chance. If I hadn't have gone through that, I would have got a master's degree. I would have been sitting up probably with a PhD. I would have never understood what some of you are going through right now. But now that I understand, this is more important to me than anything in the world, bro. Anything. Because right now, you guys are the future. 